My name is Bob Costello. I've been an, an attorney for 51 years, and I'm the former assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York, where I was deputy chief of the criminal division. I am not now, nor have I ever been, an attorney for Donald Trump, any of his family members, or any of his businesses. I've represented quite a number of high-profile individuals, but never Donald Trump. During the period April 2018 to July 2018, I represented Michael Cohen. Today, I can talk to you about what Michael Cohen told my law partner and me, because Michael Cohen waived the attorney-client privilege at the request of the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. The reason was Michael Cohen had pled guilty to eight felony counts in the Southern District and was seeking to lessen his sentence. And he thought he could be clever by going into the U.S. Attorney's Office and lying about cooperation. Michael Cohn went to the U.S. Attorney's Office and accused Rudy Giuliani and myself of conspiring to obstruct justice by tampering with a witness, namely Michael Cohn. The story, which they were floating at the time and uh, his lawyers put out in the various newspapers, was that we had dangled a pardon under Michael Cohn's nose in order to keep him quiet so that he wouldn't testify against uh, Donald Trump. Uh, when I received the call from the U.S. Attorney's Office saying, Bob, we'd like to talk to you about your representation of Michael Cohn, I said to them, can I presume that you guys are sitting there with a copy of the waiver of the attorney-client privilege? And they said, you presume correctly. I told them to scan it over to me, and once I received it, I'd be delighted to talk to them. And I did. I went down to one St. Andrews Plaza with uh, a lawyer who had been the chief of the criminal division when I was deputy chief, Tom Fitzpatrick. And on the way into the office, he said to me, Bob, aren't you nervous? I said, what for? I'm going to tell the truth, and I have documentary evidence that corroborates me six ways from Sunday. I said, there's nothing to be nervous about. And in fact, I said, I'll bet you $10 I'll have these people laughing within 15 minutes. I won the bet. I went up and I sat with two assistant U.S. attorneys, Tom McKay and Nick Rose, as well as two FBI agents whose names, unfortunately, I don't remember. Um, we had a grand old time. I explained our entire history with Michael Cohn through emails and text messages. I explained the many, many lies that Michael Cohn told us. Most especially, I told them that when we first met Michael Cohn in April of 2018, Keeping in mind now that I read Michael Cohn's testimony from yesterday's trial in New York on the way down on the train, and virtually every statement he made about me was another lie, a lie that can be proven not just by me denying it, but by myself, Jeff Citron, or Rudy Giuliani, or emails, or text messages. Virtually every statement that he made. What he tries to do is he picks out, cherry picks, certain emails or text messages and tries to make them look like something else. The story he told yesterday was that Rudy Giuliani and I were somehow conspiring to try and keep him quiet, to try and keep him from flipping. That's the term we use in the trade for cooperating. That's ridiculous. The first day that we met with Michael Cohn at the Regency Hotel, at his request, and there's email correspondence that show this, we went up there. I had never met Michael Cohn before. I didn't have any idea who he was or what sort of problem he was in. Uh, I saw this guy in a conference room at the Regency Hotel marching back and forth like a tiger in a cage. He was absolutely manic. He looked like he hadn't slept in four or five days. And he kept on, uh, he knew my partner, Jeff Citron, for 10 years. I didn't know the guy. He kept on pounding on the table throughout his speeches that day. Guys, I want you to know I will do whatever the F I have to do. I will never spend one day in jail. He had to say that at least 10 times, maybe 20. It was his constant litany as he walked back and forth. The, so I said, Michael, sit down. We need to discuss what's going on here. He told us about the raid, that his offices had been raid, raided, his uh, home had been raided. And he said, I didn't do anything wrong, guys. I don't know what they're looking for. And I said, Michael. The people in the Southern District of New York are very smart people. They got a search warrant for a lawyer's office. You can't do that just by going to the U.S. Attorney. You need to go to Maine Justice and get approval from Maine Justice. You need to show them that you have proof that a crime has been committed and that the evidence of that crime is going to exist at the site to be uh, examined. 
I said, so Michael, these people think that you did something wrong. What is it? I said, this is protected by attorney-client privilege, and it was until he waived the attorney-client privilege. I swear to God, Bob, I didn't do anything wrong. In fact, I'm cooperating with the special counsel. I'm cooperating with Congress. Of course, he forgot to tell us that he lied to Congress, but that was part and parcel of the way Michael Cohen is. So I sat him down and I said, look, Michael, clearly here, you're not the target. Nobody's ever heard of Michael Cohen, but you are the lawyer for President Trump, and clearly that's their target. And let me explain to you how things work. When they get a search warrant, they're looking to gather evidence. They already have evidence against you for something, but you haven't told us what it is. And they are going to roll over you. You're just a bump in the road. Their target is Donald Trump. So I want you to think carefully now. And by the way, up to this point, he had told us when he, when he introduced himself to us that two nights before, he was on the roof of the hotel, of the Regency Hotel, seriously considering jumping off committing suicide because he couldn't handle the pressure of the legal problems that he saw coming his way. And what he wanted to find out from us that day was his escape route. That's what he called it. Guys, you have to tell me what my escape route is. What can I do to get out of this? And I did. My obligation as a lawyer at that point in time was to explain to him what his options were. Clearly, one of his options was to cooperate. And I said to him, I said, Michael, the way this works is, if you have truthful information about Donald Trump, that's clearly what they're looking for, I can have all your legal problems solved by the end of the week. His response, I swear to God, Bob, I don't have anything on Donald Trump. I said, Michael, I want you to think carefully about this. I probably came back to this subject 10 or 20 times during the two hour period. Every time I brought it up, every time he answered, I swear to God, I, God, excuse me, Bob, I don't have anything on Donald Trump. I said, Michael, whatever you have has to be truthful. If you think you can go in there and tell these people lies, you're crazy. It's going to backfire on you. You can't do that. So do you have anything on Donald Trump? Probably the fifth or the sixth time I got around to doing that, he said, well, I know that money is missing from the Trump inaugural uh, ball. I said, is Donald Trump involved in that? No. Does Donald Trump know anything about that? No. I said, Michael, that's useless. You're not going anywhere with that. I'm trying, you asked me for your escape route. I'm telling you your escape route. All you have to do is be truthful if you have some real evidence on Donald Trump. His litany was the same all the time. I don't have anything on Donald Trump. This is exactly the opposite to what I saw him say on TV. He was telling the grand jury in Manhattan and the district attorney's office. He said, I went in there, I believe if my memory is correct, 20 times, including two appearances in the grand jury, 18 times preparation sessions with the DA's office. I was sitting at home listening to this, and I said, that's nonsense. That's not what he told Jeff Citron and myself. And I decided at that point in time, I've got to make it known to both the defense and the prosecution what the real story is, who this guy really is. So I provided all this material to uh, Donald Trump's lawyers, and I provided it to the Manhattan DA's office. And I asked for a meeting with uh, District Attorney Bragg because I wanted to go in there, let him look me in the eye, and let me explain all of the stuff that we had on Michael Cohn that showed that he's an inveterate liar. The guy can't be trusted. Bragg turned me down. But what he did say was, I'll, I'll let you have a meeting with the assistant district attorneys. Now, when the Mr. Trump Trump people, we, we need you just to, I'm sorry, when the Trump people heard about all this, they insisted, as was their right under the law, that the DA put me before the grand jury. Right. So that I was scheduled for a Monday. On the Friday before, I gave the DA's office the courtesy of a Zoom conference for about an hour and a half. Eight assistant district attorneys and me on the other end. I explained, they didn't ask, really ask me any questions. They just said, what do you want to say? Nice warm greeting for somebody who's trying to show them the right path quietly and privately so that they could correct their error before they made it. <laughs>